So I'm on a brand new mini PC, which runs Windows 11. I want to see if we can get Mac OS on this machine. So let's have a look. So a bit of research has brought me to this page for the open core install guide. It says we need to have time and patience, know how to use command line and a machine that is compatible. CPU I have is a Ryzen 7 8745HS in this machine. I think we're just gonna have to try it. And apparently all we have to do is run open core simplify as an administrator. There we go. So step one, we're gonna click select hardware report and then we're gonna export. We've got a supported CPU apparently but an unsupported GPU. Okay, so a bit of further research has led me to this page, which is a set of tools to set up a virtual machine for macOS. So let's see if we can get this working. Step one, clone the repo. Let's pull up Windows Terminal and we're gonna put in the git clone command, which is not gonna work because we're gonna have git. So we're gonna win get git. I forgot the command, uh, win get install git. Yes, I agree. Oh, we want git.git. .git. Okay, we're installing git now. There we go, successfully installed. So now we have to exit, open it back up and we're gonna run the the git clone command again. It's downloading the files. Okay, done. So now we've got a bunch of files in our downloads folder, like so. Okay, so we're gonna be installing on Windows, which means we need WSL. Let's go ahead and run this command, WSL install. Yes, and it's gonna download that. Successful change will not be effective until the system is rebooted. So let's go ahead and reboot. All right, we're back in Windows. Now we can move on to step two. Open a new Ubuntu terminal window. So let's just launch WSL down here and it crashes. WSL crashes immediately. Why? Why is it doing that? Run WSL-L-V. WSL has no installed distributions for some reason. Let's run the recommended command. All right, cool. We want Ubuntu. So we're gonna run WSL-install Ubuntu-22.04. It looks like it's gonna do it now. Okay, so a bunch of stuff has popped up. We got welcome to WSL. I'm gonna just get rid of that for now. We've got an Ubuntu terminal, which wants a login. New password, this one. Retype new password, updated successfully. Cool. All right, we're in... Uh, a Linux terminal. These are all the things it's doing. Pretty cool. So now we can move on to the next step. And no, Windows backup. No. Open the terminal window, run this command, replacing the Windows username with your Windows username. And then run sudo apt install git dash all dash y. Unable to locate package git all. I think it means git space dash all. No, it doesn't mean that. This is the problem I have with Linux stuff. Like people say, oh, just use the guide. And then you follow the guide exactly and it doesn't work. Like I'm gonna copy the command just to make sure I typed it correctly. No, it says unable to locate package git all. Whatever, I think we can install git with just sudo apt install git. All right, git's already installed. So we don't even need to do this. It's just a redundant step. Okay, now we're gonna clone the repository. That's fine. Step three. Three, install QEMU and virtualization capabilities. Okay, run the installer. A lot of stuff's happening. Wants my password again. All right, we made it. So we're on the screen that looks like this screen. We're gonna go down to virtualization and make sure our system processor type is selected. Exit, all right, save. Now run these commands to make sure virtualization works. Okay, running these commands. I don't have Y here. We go to the bottom page for troubleshooting. Okay, all right, all right. Edit these commands in WSL config, which is located, okay. This is completely empty. So let's save that, close, and then try running this again. No. From what I'm understanding, this is all just for nested virtualization anyway, which I shouldn't need to do for Mac OS, provided that Windows itself is not running in a virtual machine. So we just need to disable virtualization based security and we should be fine. Now we need to download this, open a terminal and run it, bypass the execution policy. Now run it and the options we wanna use are dash disable. All right, there we go, Hyper-V is disabled. So now we can actually reboot and we should be able to run virtual machines. Uh, yes, I wanna disable it, continue. Yes, I wanna disable that, continue. All right, we're back in Windows. So we're done with the preparation steps, it looks like. So now we're gonna head over to this page and we're gonna run dot slash setup.sh and apparently it'll work. Choose a product to download. Oh my gosh. Um, I guess the latest one, right? Mac OS Tahoe. Here we go. Oh my gosh. We've got signs of Mac OS right here. Can we resize the window for you guys? So I guess this one, it's loading. Okay, yeah, this is the Mac OS recovery. So this is what we want. Select disk utility and then select the biggest drive. Okay, choose erase, Macintosh SSD, formatting. Okay, we're done. Blows out of disk utility. All right, so now we're gonna click reinstall Mac OS Tahoe. Continue, Macintosh SSD. And it's gonna be done in about three hours and nine minutes. Apparently the setup ETA is not accurate. Some users prefer to install it overnight for this reason. Okay, hopefully it doesn't take three hours, but we'll, We'll see. Okay, it just finished and it dumped me back at the 
reboot menu, pretty much. After it reboots, you must continually select the macOS installer. Let's click this one. So I guess it's not really done yet. Been on this screen for about four hours now. The website does say if it gets stuck for a prolonged period of time at any point, especially at this one, do not worry as this is normal. But I'm just gonna do a reset on the machine and see if it gets any further. We've got the beach ball up here. Everything's good. Now the guy did mention it's very laggy and will get faster. Put me in Afghanistan. That's fine. Transfer your data to this Mac. Uh, I'm going to not do that. English Afghanistan is fine. We'll figure that out later. Reduce transparency. Continue, continue, continue again, continue, continue, continue. Oh, we want dark mode guys for sure. Let's go with Chris Pro. The account is creating. All right, we're going to skip the Apple account before the whole installer crashes. Come on. Okay, so I left it overnight night and it's been stuck on this screen. Oh, we're here. We're at the login screen. So let's try putting in my password. It's loading. We've got Finder coming up. Keyboard setup assistant. Your Quemu device cannot be identified. I'm just going to click quit on that. All right. Well, I guess we're technically at the desktop now. We can't really interact with stuff yet. It's still loading, but um, let's check the guide. All right. We'll do some of these in a minute. I think we have to give this thing more resources to start with. Following line controls memory allocation. The default is four gig. We've actually got quite a lot of RAM. We've got 32 gig in here. So we can probably bump this up to at least 16. And we're also going to change the core counts. And let's make it 16 threads. Why not, right? So I'm going to go shut down. vCPU3 guest rip. All right. So now we can um, basically just launch it again. Also, I'm going to run it headless this time. There's our Mac. And while we're here, we can hit control enter. And that will make this the default boot option. Let's just hope it starts up with that in the errors. It's just stuck here. I will try four cores and four threads. There we go. We're at the... Login screen. You shut down your computer because of a problem. Yes, I did. I don't care about it. So after all that, here we are on macOS within Windows. macOS really doesn't like being in a virtual machine like this. I, I think it's not happy about it. Let's try and open the apps drawer. Okay, the app drawer opened, but then Finder opened. So I didn't really get to see it. Okay, about this Mac. Apparently it's an iMac Pro with a picture of a Mac Pro here. And it's a quad core Intel i3 with seven megs of VRAM, 16 gigs of regular RAM and eight PCI card slots. Can I change the wallpaper? I, I would be happy if I could just change the wallpaper. Let's open up system settings. Okay, so appearance and then scroll down. Here we go. Oh, there's literally a wallpaper button. Uh, this is why I don't use Mac. Let's pick the Teho. Look at this thing going. Task manager on Mac OS. Nah, not really. It's using all the cores. This is really efficient. So we don't get a wallpaper, I guess. I, I could just add a wallpaper now for you guys if you want me to. But yeah, this was a bit of a fun experiment trying to get Mac OS on here. It sort of worked in the end. And Ryzen chips have really come a long way. Like they can run pretty much anything and they really don't generate that much heat these days compared to what else is out there. So yeah, I want to thank Geekom for sending me this PC to review and letting me make this video. So if you're looking for a PC that is really small to travel with or put behind a TV or stash away in your desk somewhere where your space is limited. This is the perfect little machine for you and you can do a lot of real work on it. I was able to get it to run Battlefield 6 and I even tried installing Windows 8 on it and it went pretty well. There will be an affiliate link down below with a discount code if you want to pick up this machine. If you've got more video ideas, let me know in the Discord or you could follow me on Twitch, Instagram or even TikTok now. That's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.